All right. Welcome to today's um, Advent of Code in Haskell. It's day six. Uh, took us three hours yesterday. It was quite intense. Uh, I mean, we got to a solution in like two hours, but then we did an extra hour and we made it like 80 times faster. So we're going to see uh, how we do today. Um, I don't know. I haven't like, uh, so, so apparently task one is not too bad, but task two is worse. Is all I've heard. But uh, yeah, we will see. Let me just uh, check one thing real quick. Just gonna see the stream manager. Yes, our bitrate is good. All right, let's check it out. Day six. All right, so yesterday, um, we we were like figuring out some clouds, some like poisonous clouds. So now we're getting pretty deep, right? And it's getting steeper. Okay, a massive school of glowing lantern face swims past. They may spawn quickly if you search large numbers, maybe exponentially quickly. You should model their growth rate to be sure. Okay. <laughs> you know, it seems like Santa is just finding random things to do, actually. Although you know nothing about this specific species of lanternfish, you make some guesses about their attributes. Surely each lanternfish creates a new lanternfish once every seven days. However, this process isn't necessarily synchronized between every lanternfish. One lanternfish might have two days left until it creates another one by another four. So you can model each fish as a single number that represents the number of days until it creates a new lanternfish. Okay, furthermore, you reason a new lanternfish would surely need slightly longer before it's capable of producing more lanternfish. Two more days for its first cycle. Suppose you have a lanternfish with an internal time value of three. So yeah, it's a two. Okay, so okay, so it's two, so one, zero. Then it goes back to six, and it creates a new lanternfish with an internal timer of eight. After another day, the first lanternfish would have an internal timer of five, and the second lanternfish would have an internal timer of seven. A lanternfish that creates a new fish resets its timer to six, not seven. Because zero is included in the valid number. Okay, the new lanternfish starts with an internal timer of eight and does not start counting down until the next day. Ooh. Realizing what you're trying to do, this submarine automatically produces a list of ages of several hundred nearby lanternfish. Year puzzle input. For example, suppose you were giving the following list. 3, 4, 2, 1. This list means that the first fish has an internal timer of 3, the second fish has an internal timer of 4, and so on until the fifth fish, which has an internal timer of 2. Simulating this fish over several days would proceed as follows. 3, 4, 3, 1, 2. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay, so each day zero becomes six and adds a new eight to the end of the list, while each other number decreases by one if it was present at the start of the day. In this example, after 18 days, a total of 26 fish. After 80 days, there would be a total of 5934. Find a way to simulate lanternfish. How many lanternfish would there be after 80 days? Okay, so the input is pretty simple. Uh, we don't really have to parse much today. Let's say module main where 
a example let's just put it right in there example the list of things and you know for the input itself is going to be 100 that's not too bad okay so the first thing to realize is that a uh, each of these are independent all right so we can calculate like how many the first a fish that starts with three will give us and how many a fish that starts with four will give us and three and one and two and then just sum them together okay um right so it's a three two four one yeah And then so each day the zero becomes a six and adds a new eight to the end of the list. Well, wow. okay. Let's see. So let's go for, you know, like a um, lantern fish. So we have a, a internal timer and we want to simulate it for a number of days are we going to return uh int right okay lantern fish so it's a timer and then days okay uh, so so uh lantern fish uh so no matter the timer if the days is zero it's going to give us um let's put that here lantern fish underscore so the days is zero that's uh, going to be one fish Hello, little Lenny. Hello, Bello. Hello, Bello. Nice. Um, we're working this out. Okay, it's land fish. The zero is going to give us one. Okay. Um, Uh, lantern fish. So the timer is zero. It's going to give us a um, so days. So lan lantern fish is the days are is zero. It's going to give us lantern fish. Um, Like one at six days plus lantern fish eight days. Okay. Um, otherwise, if it's not zero, it's just going to give us lantern fish timer minus one days. Days minus one, I think. Let's have it the other way around. Okay, zero days, days, zero. Okay, let's compute this for uh, GCI D6.HS. Main IO main equals return. Let's compute it like this. Now let's just map lantern fish and let's see. Ooh, do, 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 no. All right, do we want this to be? So there's zero days left. Yeah, okay. We want this to be 
days, and then the, we have this internal timer, six, nine days, and eight. So what we're going to do is like we're going to do this, right? And then we're going to memoize it to make it faster. Uh, but first we check, we can just do this. We reload it. Now lantern, fish. We're going to map lantern fish uh, 18 over example some that's 15 uh, each day a zero becomes a six and adds a new eight to the end of the list while each other decreases by one if it was present at the start of the day. This is maybe days minus one. I think it's alright, so we decrease the days as well. Now let me get 14. Okay, wait. Do 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 So at the end of day one So why does it become um So lantern fish 18.3 Why is that 1? So 0 should become 1. Okay, now 18's 0 is Lanternfish 6 plus Lanternfish days Oh, I forgot this Timer Twenty six. All right, so I think we are getting there now. So, okay, so we're going to be able to uh, compute this pretty fast. Let's just get the input, right? Let's just see if it's super slow. I don't think this is slow. Input, int, input equals quite long this input right um, but uh, first of all okay but let's let's do some premature so I don't think we need to memoize the function so much um, but like like in this input right we can sort it like we can just count the number of ones and we count the number of um, How long is this? Oh, okay. It is quite long. It doesn't matter. So we can, so we don't need to do it for all of them, right? We can just kind of do it all at once. Uh, so like, yeah, once for each one. Okay. Uh, so this is, we have the lanternfish function and then we're going to say, um, lantern pool is going to take a list of Ints and return as an int. Lantern pool is going to say uh, group. Oh yeah, we have to. We, we should have the days as well here. So we're gonna take the uh, ints, uh, ints, and then days. So we're gonna say uh, sort ints. And we're gonna group them and we're gonna import data list and so where in it's 
Okay, then we we have like a groups, uh, so we're gonna say um, we're gonna we're gonna let me just see here undefined. Um, so let's just look at them, right? Okay, so we reload. Oh yeah, group units. All right, this is gonna be infinite group. Okay, so we have a group of sort input. All right, so then we are going to sort them. A I comma I I and L's is equal to map a we're gonna take uh, we're gonna take a list and we're gonna say um And we're going to say here, and it's a x comma length of L. Grouped. Alright, so uh, we take this and we map the uh, L at x underscore to uh, x comma length L. So we... And then, so what the, the thing is that we could just multiply by these, right? Uh, let's see. So we, we group the I's and L's. Then, um, so, uh, so num per pool is equal to uh this takes in the init and the uh the i and the l and it's equal to lantern fish um and then the it stays and then i and we multiply by that by l Okay, uh, so number pool is an int. So we do uh, sum map sum number pool sum map number pool grouped. No, I and L's lantern pool. Okay, then we say here a uh, example and uh, 18 26 now we say example 80 five nine three four okay uh, now we do it for the input it's not bad three six five three eight six two now let's uh, say here print lantern pool input 80. And let's uh, GT03 day6.hs compile it time day6. Okay, it's six milliseconds. It's not taking any time. And we check if it's correct. All right, we got the first gold star. I think we're going to be quick today, but I was told that the first one was quite fast. But uh, the second one was harder. Suppose the lanternfish live forever and have unlimited food and space. Would they take over the entire ocean? After 256 days in the example above, there will be a total of... Okay, uh, I think we can do this. We just have to... Make this into integer. Um, num per pool is going to be so. This is going to be um, from integral 
Now what's wrong here? Number pool. Number pool takes in an it's it's a list of int and int integer. Okay, and this should return an integer. So now the types are correct. Uh, time day six. Okay, so now we should have integers everywhere. And uh, do, 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 do. okay, so this might be slow, but uh, we'll see. Okay, it's taking quite a long time to run. Uh, but we're computing it once per day, right? Let's uh, not run it for the input. Let's run it for the example first. I don't think it's any. It's not. It's not going to be that much longer for the. Um... Ding 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 ding. Okay, we're gonna have to memoize here. Okay, let's just run it, but so I think it's because like the six and the eight. We're computing that for all of them, right? We don't really need to do that. Ding, 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 ding. Jantin. Nice to see you again. Good luck on this problem. Thanks. Uh, I think we need to memoize things. Because like the naive way of doing it is... Uh, it's not going very fast. Ding <laughs> ding. We unsafe course. Um, I think there's like a maybe it's just like a function we can just call to memoize. Ding 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 ding.
do, 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 do. So I'm wondering, um, Yeah, it's also like not multi threaded or anything, right? And it's taking up yeah a lot of memory and stuff. Dee 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 ding Alright, let's just uh Have it carry around, right? A um, map of int, comma, int, int. Here we don't care about it. Here we don't care about it. Here we don't care about it. Um, but I mean, okay, actually, we do care about it. Import qualified data dot map, map as map. Okay, uh, now lantern fish. Um, so it's actually going to be here. Um, lantern fish. Okay, so I'm, I, I might. Uh, yeah, it's going to be fine. Lantern fish. Um, It's just gonna take a slant. Let's do it for the lantern pool. Uh, lantern. Okay. A lantern fish. Takes in an int and an int and returns an integer. Now, lantern. Lantern fish equals lantern fish prime map dot empty empty now lantern fish prime where okay um so this is a memo so we do first here case um um Days, days, comma, zero. Memo of just lantern fish prime map int, comma, int integer to int int integer okay if if we have an answer memoized already just res and we turn res so if we don't have it then we say um all right and we have to return the map again right map int comma int comma integer comma integer lantern fish uh, so this is gonna be a second uh, this is gonna be a memo and we just return memo comma one okay so if we uh, so if if it's in the map 
then we just return memo comma res okay otherwise we say uh, we say uh, let memo prime comma r equal to lantern fish prime memo days zero no wait days uh, days minus one days minus one uh, six Prime or two, you'll do lantern fish prime memo prime days minus one eight, and then in um, memo prime map dot insert. All right so then we map dot insert a uh, days comma zero uh, into and then it's uh, r plus r r plus r2 um, memo prime prime right r plus r2 all right this is dot lantern fish map empty and we take a second Good match with the map, map, map me. This one takes a map. Okay, yeah, okay, sorry. I always go up the order here. So if then this one is an integer, then we just return memo res. Otherwise, we look the two up, we pass it along. Okay, this should be a redundant bracket. And then let's, this is a memo, and this is just a land fresh prime memo. Let's see if it works. Lantern fish prime in line 14. What do you want? So it's int int, right? So uh, this is a, a days i and this is days i Why was it complaining? I don't know Let's run it for the example. Two six nine eight four four five seven five three nine. Five six five and three nine. Five six five and three nine. Yes. Input. I think we got it. Four milliseconds. Th 
thanks to memoization. All right. That was pretty easy. Uh, well, it wasn't easy, but like we knew that we just memoized it, right? So we went from like, it's not even done after 11 and a half minutes to four milliseconds. And why? Well, uh, the memoization really means that uh, it really means that we um, we really so it's called dynamic programming, right? We really we're really taking it from like an exponential problem down to like a linear and like blah blah problem right by just kind of computing once because otherwise what we were doing is like we were computing again and again for the same values uh and now we don't do that so we can actually probably make this slightly faster by uh by um like uh by like folding here all right so and then kind of use the same um the same memoization but yeah i mean for we can make it in four milliseconds or one milliseconds zero it's not bad right and we did it in 30 minutes so I think it's a pretty decent problem today. Or a decent solution at least. Okay. Uh, yeah, since this was so quick. Um, let's see. What can we... Can we do it? Yeah. So I think like this is also like, you know, if you're going for uh, like an interview or you're like uh, doing programming competitions, um, this is usually how you do it, right? You memoize because, uh, yeah, because they, they just love to give you kind of exponential problems that are super quick if you memoize. Um, and uh, functional languages make it pretty easy to memoize. So, because we just, you know, we just passed around a map, right? And then we're looking up the map and then like we compute one thing with a map and then we compute the second and it's like, and then we insert the answer we got. Uh, into the yeah and that's like that's what we return from days of zero right and then it just works right <laughs> yeah i'm actually impressed that it just worked though i uh i was expecting to have to deal with some trickiness but i think yeah I think this is a solution we can be happy with. It's very inconsistent, but it's like sometimes 4 milliseconds, sometimes 10. But yeah, like we're at that point where it's like, it's so fast, it doesn't really... It doesn't really do anything, right? Let's see. Beep, 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 Okay. Um, let's just do the fold, right? Um, and I remember which one it is, but yeah. 
So we're gonna say uh, that. So here, then we don't. We return. We return the map. Uh, type uh, memo is. If that's just equal to this memoization map. And then this is memo to memo. And then this is, so we return the memo. Okay, and um, then num per pool. Uh, Ooh, so this is going to take in a memo and an int comma int and return an integer and we're going to say lanternfish okay let's actually have it like this uh, but we just kind of expose lanternfish prime um and then we just call we say here this is memo and uh, lantern pool lantern pool m so and then we just say this is uh no, the function we're going to fold over here is going to be memo and then into int and then and it returns an integer now ghi what's the type of fold r so i think we want to do like this it takes like the the, the current member value and and uh, and returns memo comma integer and we're working at g type fold l prime and we're gonna do fold r okay uh, which is me just means we do like this um So we say fold r num per pool and then we say map dot map dot empty comma zero ding 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 and this one is and then we take the second of that now we do here uh this is gonna be int int comma int and then memo occur so we say uh, where uh, n res is equal to so memo prime comma r is equal to lantern fish prime um, And then it's uh, going to be memo and it's going to be days, right? And it's going to be I. Okay, so this is the result, the new memo and the result. So this, so these this is going to be the new one is going to be memo prime and after like with this we don't even have to do the group and sorts right we we just look up yeah but so it's going to be memo prime and it's going to be um a cur plus from integral l times r Now let's reload. Uh, now let's do lantern pool M here. Let's see if it actually works. Uh, 
I mean, it works. But uh, the other one was so fast that we don't really see any difference. We're like at the limits of how, like just timing with the bash command, right? All right, uh, so now we do it. Uh, we can also use past memorization in the new one. So I think we'll just call it quits. After this, I'm going to go climbing. It's a nice sport since I finished so fast. Uh, yeah, but you know, some days are three hours. Some days is 45 minutes. Let's add this git add day six at features git state git commit. Let's uh, let's uh, add a add a git ignore here. That says a star 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 dot dump simple. Uh, star star uh, input star star example git push okay We've updated this, um, and uh, yeah, I think we did good today. It was uh, we did it in a decent amount of time. We did it like in a reasonable way. We tried to do it naively, just say, hey, you know, if it's Haskell fast enough to just do it. Um, but uh, that didn't work out. Because it was, yeah, we'd run it for 11 and a half minutes and was still running. Which is a bit much. But by memoization, like a very simple memoization, just like look up the arguments in a map. And then like once you compute them, save them. And then use that. Like, uh, it just worked. Right. So I think it's good. All right. Thanks for today. Sorry, I guess, for how short it was, but uh, we're just too good. Huh? All right. Uh, thanks for again. And uh, I think I'll see you at uh, 7.30 tomorrow. 19.30, that is uh, my time. So like half an hour later, because I'm going to go uh, play floorball at 6. And, you know, I want to have... And it's on from 6 to 7. I want to be, you know, get be able to get ready. So, uh, tune in tomorrow at uh, 7.30. And uh, have a nice Monday. All right. Catch you uh, tomorrow. Bye-bye.